Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have been asked to give a little bit of a review or um, I guess like an update on how I feel about the Cosmo Air Light paper, which is what I have here and it's in my Traveler's Notebook um, cover that I got off of Amazon, but it's the uh, Traveler's Company and it's made in Thailand. I mentioned this the other day. I just set it in some crumbs or something here. This is where I do a lot of crafting and sewing and I got something on there. Anyway, um, it's kind of got a fuzzy, suede cover. Um, I think that's the way they are now. If you're looking for the smooth, it's a little bit different. But that's beside the point, but just in case you were wondering. So I am finding that I really do like this paper a lot. I'm using this as my gratitude journal and I try to write in it every day and I try to mix up the pens that I use. Um, but what I did here was just a little bit of a summary today or a compilation or something, I don't know what to call it exactly, but a sampling, there you go, um, of different kinds of pens. I don't have a huge variety. So I just did one of my Twisbees and one of each kind of pen and nib that I have to show you how it might look. Um, uh, let me just kind of interrupt myself here. I first heard about this paper from Sarah Martinez on uh, YouTube. She's got tons and tons of great videos on journaling and planners and inks and pens and pen cases and so forth. But I want to warn you, if you watch her, you will want to buy numerous things. So be careful. Um, now, Sarah's great, and I've really learned a lot from watching her channel. But she first talked about getting this on um, Etsy from Danica58, if I have that right. I'm going to just zoom in just a little. Um, and then my friend Jen, thank you, Jen, um, told me that Yoseka Stationery or Yosika, um, you can go online, it's a New York based company and you can get one of these only in blank and A5 size. Um, but a reminder, you can get that cut down to fit a standard size traveler's notebook. But, okay, let's get back to point at hand here. Different inks, different pens, and I'm really liking this. I At first when I got it, I just kind of went through and did this kind of thing, Merry Christmas, whatever, and like it was okay. Um, it didn't really strike me as being that great. Um, I didn't dislike it, but I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if it's worth the hype, but since I have found a good combination and a lot of my pens with inks that I really like, I'm loving the qualities that this paper brings out in the inks. I keep pulling this closer to the screen because the way I have it clamped on my phone, I can't see what I'm showing you. So anyway, um, you can read, obviously, but this is um, a Twisby Eco in broad. All my Twisbees I have and broad nibs right now, broad nibs on them, except for one, and I didn't use that. So just one Twisby, this is the Yamabudo. I, I'm drawn to wetter inks, and I am very much drawn to the broad nibs, so that's mostly what I'm showing you, but if you're familiar with any of these inks, and you think you might like to try this paper, this might help you see if you'll like the results. So I'm gonna switch it over here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, the Ancient Copper from the Lamy Safari Broad Nib. I don't know if you can see that. It is so neat. And the Yamabudo I'm in love with. I, I love it with my Twisby Eco. Good recommendation from Jen. Thank you, Jen. And Ancient Copper, uh, Donna first sent me a sample from a South Shore paper, and I bought a bottle because I liked it. This is another sample that Donna sent me, Desert Burst, and I have it in my Benu Briolette. Very nice there. Slightly less wet than these two, but I love it. And um, I'm liking that Benu Briolette pen a lot. I like the nib on that. I think this is River of Fire, and I have it in my Caveco Brass Sport. It's got a little bit of a sheen, but 
it just brings out so much of the shading qualities in my diamine, diamine, however you say it, um, sepia ink. It was an ink. Okay, I bought that several months ago when I kind of first started with fountain pens. And I was so disappointed because what they show you on the little ads on whatever ink website you go to, it looks so cool and the shading looks really neat. I was not having good luck with it. But in my Golden Espresso, my new pen, Caveco All Sport in Broad Nib, I'm hoping you can see the really neat shading. Now I've asked this um, before and I have written one or two of you asking you, but I'm going to just throw this question out now too and please comment below if you have a, um, an answer for me. When I write with the sepia and I have it in my new pen, it starts out writing really um, with a lot of shading, like in a really deep version of the sepia. If I'm writing a lot, it tends to get very faint. And I'm wondering why it starts out so bold and uh, dynamic looking and then it kind of fades to the lighter shading here the lighter color and it seems to run drier is it because I'm writing too quickly and the feed the nib can't keep up with it um, I've been trying to store them with the nib down so it's like at first it's amazing but then the more I write it seems to run drier and with less shading so I'm not sure why that is but what I'll do sometimes is unscrew it and push down the plunger and I guess that forces more ink into the nib area and then it seems like that quality will resume but oh it's so nice to write with it's so nice and then here um, Jen shared with me a, a Caveco pen it's a fine nib and I have the Ferris wheel press ink in it when I wrote this I didn't know what it was so I went back and found it it's bluegrass velvet and it the paper works really nicely with the fine nib as well. Uh, very smooth, but again, I I think I can like feel the difference better with the broader nibs um, when evaluating how I like it. And of course, with the fine, it's a little bit harder to see the shading. But just to go back here, can you see on that B how amazing that shading is? Oh, it's so cool. And then for something a little bit different, I um, used my Rouge et Matite. It's a J. I always want to say it with my very poor French accent, but I've heard it pronounced J. Herbin, but I think you'd say Herbin in French. <laughs> anyway, um, I used my Moon Man dip pen, and I. I think you get a little bit of the shimmer there. I probably it probably doesn't show up very well, but that's kind of cool. I I don't get the result I want with this ink very much at all. I haven't found a pen that it works well with. It seems like the dip pen is the best thing to bring out the shading and the uh, shimmer. Um, it's a beautiful ink, but it hasn't worked real well for me. Um, but I think it's really neat. It's an anniversary color, and it was celebrating, like, the company's, I don't know what anniversary, but they started in, in 1600s, and I think that's absolutely amazing. So I, I wanted that ink, but it has really not been my favorite. So, um, but I, I think that's very commendable of the company, that they've had such a good run of it and such a good product to endure for centuries. That's amazing. Um, so here's the two places that you can get this paper. And this is just a sampling of various inks and a few different types of pens and not much variation in nib sizes. But if you like the broad, I think you might like this. Um, I think it was Sarah saying that it it isn't a real smooth paper. Got ink on my hand, um, and I found 
that to be true too. I mean, if you touch it, it doesn't like just glide. It doesn't feel bad. It's not like a newspaper print or anything, but um, it has a little bit, I guess, of what they call feedback. So, or that toothiness. It's a, a little more scratchy with a fine nib, but not like in a bad way, but just you get that little kind of sound. Um, but I think it's very nice to write with. I don't like so much. I bought some Claire Fontaine. That sort of paper is too, is it too slick for me? I, I was surprised that I didn't like it. I expected to love it. I think I still prefer the Tomoe River paper, but I think this would be a very close runner up, if not tie. It, it, it is thicker. It doesn't have that like crinkly kind of thing going on, at least not yet. And I've just recently started this as, like I said, a gratitude journal. So it, it doesn't have that, um, you know, that crinkly kind of thing going on, but it really does bring out beautifully the qualities of the inks I've used on it. And interestingly, um, the verse from Zephaniah, I'll zoom in on, but um, I got some shading here with uh, the Noodler's Green Marine, which came as quite a surprise to me. I, I didn't really think there was much, if any, of that present, so that's super cool. Um, I, I would recommend it, and I think if you can get it cheaper at the Yoseka Stationery, that might be a good way to do it. Um, I did mention that I decided to go ahead and make the purchase because I felt like it would add a new element to my fountain pen hobby. Um, you know, it's not like you have to do it, but it is a hobby and I do enjoy trying different papers and inks. So for me, it seemed like a, a fun thing to try and I'm really glad that I did try it. And I just wanted to talk about these pens a little bit. Now, I got this one from my daughter, um, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney, for Christmas, I think it was. And uh, Jen from Jen's TNs recommended this to me, and I really do love it. I wasn't sure, for, sure if I was going to like a non-demonstrator pen because I love seeing the beautiful inks and the slashing, and it just seems fun. But I thought, yeah, I, I like the look of those, and I'm so glad I tried it. The brass is a much more heavy-weighted pen. Um, let's get out this uh, Stology thing. Yeah, I don't need to get too distracted here, but... Um, okay, now my pen's dry. No, it's okay. This is an okay paper to write on, too. Um, but I'm just showing this because... I want to write while I'm talking about it, but it's heavy, and I have heard that a heavy pen, I've heard both, but one thing I've heard is that a heavier pen helps with long writing because the weight of the pen sort of helps you to be able to relax your grip, I think is the idea. So um, it almost like helps you with it. It's doing some of the work. It's not so light that you have to grip it so you you lose control maybe. Um, is this called an all sport? I don't know if it is or not. But anyway, uh, this is the broad nib. So I enjoy picking this up every time and writing with it. It does have a very small converter. Um, I am glad that I bought that though and um, Pickwick Turtle, I think it was her, um, she commented that she likes that little converter because you can try various inks more frequently. It's not like if you fill a Twisby full and you write and write, and you're like, hey, I'm getting tired of this color, I want to switch it out. I mean, with this small converter, it doesn't take long for you to use it up, which can be good or bad, depending on your purpose or perspective on that. But I kind of like that because I do want to try lots of inks, and I have had some generous friends send me samples. And so I think it's kind of a good pen to use, too, to try different inks 
and not have to commit to a long time. And then again, you don't have to fill your, say, Twisby demonstrator full. But I, I like that. Now this is a beautiful pen. This is um, the Golden Espresso. It's the Caveco Allsport. I've just briefly talked about it, but it's got a really pretty clip if you take time to notice the details. It's got the Caveco symbol. And then here it says All Sport, made in Germany. It's got the more, I would say, almost antique or vintage gold looking finial. Or this is a little brighter, the clasp that we bought. Whoops, I'm writing on the hand. Okay, and in here, what do I have? I forget. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the sepia. So the feel of this in hand is quite different than this, but they both write really nicely. Um, it just glides along, even on this Stology paper. Here you can see that I'm getting more of a... Um, monochromatic, is that the right word? There's not a lot of variation. You can see a little bit of it where I started or ended the little squiggles. It's a pretty color, this um, sepia, but you get way more variation. If I'm, if I'm doing this right, I, I might be getting my things mixed up here. Yeah, see how much more golden that looks? It's such a richer hue. There's more shading. Um, so this is a nice ink to ink. And I'm probably not even showing it. Gosh, I'm such an idiot sometimes. Here we go. <laughs> Clamp your phone differently so you can read. You get much more shading and a richer color than, say, on a, a paper like this. And I like that. That's why I bought the various inks that I did and... Um, so it, I guess I was saying it, it's good for that. If you want to bring out your inks qualities, it, it's a fun paper to write on. And just to go back to this, uh, I was saying that, let's look here, sepia and sepia, totally different look. This I love, this is okay. This is really fun to write with. And it just seems to bring out the broad nib wideness of the line, I think is what I'm trying to say, versus on a little different kind of paper. This, like I was also saying, is very light. Um, and I've had people comment, too, that a lighter pen is good for longer writing sessions because your hand doesn't fatigue. And then there's also the frame of thought that... The heaviness helps kind of do the work for you. So I think I could write a long time with either of these pens. My only um, difficulty being is that they seem to start to, like I said a minute ago, um, run a little more dry the longer I write unless I push down that plunger and just create more pressure in there, bring more ink closer to the nib. I'm not sure... I'm too new at this to know exactly what I'm talking about, but that's been my experience. But I do love both of these pens. Totally different feel. This is very rich looking, but it's light, very light in hand. I mean, I hardly feel that it's there. So if that appeals to you, that is a really good pen. This is a, a totally different experience. And my son told me that brass is all the thing now because... It's supposed to be antimicrobial or bacterial or something. Anyway, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm sure he's right. I don't care that it's that. I just enjoy writing with both of these pens. Both are different, but I love the look of them. They're really fun pens. They're something different, obviously quite different than a Twisby Eco. I enjoy both writing experiences, and I, I really would recommend either of these pens depending on your nib size that you prefer um, order it in what you like but for me the broad is a um, really nice writing experience so there's my update I would give that a thumbs up 
I would give this a thumbs up. Um, definitely, it, it is expensive. Oh, but the writing, I think, is nice on it. Um, I do want to say a quick, quick thing on this. I put this um, notebook in a different uh, cover, and I had just had it, like, in the back, or was it? Yeah, let me bend this around. You can see here where it tore. I think maybe the elastics in my other notebook, uh, like it's too full, it was in my um, Rustic Kodiak, my Speckled Fawns Rustic Kodiak. I don't know if the elastic was too thick or I have that Traveler's Notebook cover too full, but it was tearing into this uh, binding. So it appears to be quite strong, but it didn't hold up to having an elastic on the back cover and it kind of bent it here a little bit too. Word of warning, this may do better in a uh, folio type setup. And if I had a folio in this size, I probably would switch it over. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.